And for more, we turn to Michael Leiter, who was director of the National Counterterrorism Center from 2008 until the middle of last year. And Ali Soufan, a former supervisory special agent for the FBI. His cases included the bombing of the USS Cole in Yemen in 2000, as well as 9-11. Welcome, gentlemen, to you both. Michael Leiter, let me begin first with new reports today by the L.A. Times and others that, in fact, this plot was foiled through essentially a sting operation. There was a Saudi who posed as a would-be suicide bomber and managed to get a hold of the weapon. Can you confirm any of that? I can't confirm it, Margaret. I, I would say that this is exactly what we expect and want our intelligence services to do, but it's extremely hard to do it, especially in a place like Yemen. It, I think, probably represents a great partnership between the U.S. government and the government of Saudi Arabia. But this sort of information is incredibly sensitive. And I actually think it's somewhat unfortunate that it's been widely reported, because what it does, it reduces our ability to use these sorts of sources or this sort of methodology to exploit al-Qaeda and stop future plots, which they are undoubtedly going to pursue. Mr. Soufan, do you have any information about this, this sort of latest development? Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree with Mike, and I don't think, uh, you know, the situation at this point is uh, to divulge uh, sources and methods. It's a great success for the intelligence community, great success for the CIA, and uh, I think uh, we had a uh, few good days in Yemen. Mr. Sivan, staying with you, so how alarmed should we be by this plot, either the, the discovery that this kind of plotting is still going on and, from what we are told, a more sophisticated device? Well, I, I think uh, we shouldn't be surprised at all. Al-Qaeda and the Arabian Peninsula is the closest to bin Laden's version of Al-Qaeda. All these individuals were with bin Laden in Afghanistan, served with bin Laden. They are not one of these Al-Qaeda groups that uh, were franchised after 9-11. Uh, those people definitely have the commitment. Uh, they have the intent. And uh, Ibrahim al-Asiri, the bomb maker, is providing them with the capability. So they are very dangerous. And I think uh, we should keep in mind that they will always try to accomplish their goal. I mean, al-Qaeda tried to do a shoe bomb and then an underwear bomb, a printer bomb, uh, and they will continue to work hard uh, to inflict damage uh, to the United States. Uh, fortunately, our intelligence community and the CIA have uh, their eyes on the ball in Yemen, mm -hmm. and it's a great success what uh, they were able to do in the last 24 hours. Michael Leiter, let me ask you, when John Brennan said today, uh, and I quote, this IED was a threat from the standpoint of the design, what is he talking about? Well, this bomb, and also the bomb that the bomb maker of Siri is probably responsible for back in 2009, the first underwear bomb, and then the printer cartridges bomb bombs that were detected in 2010, represent a real challenge for screening, with no metal pieces at all. Uh, a standard magnetometer or a metal detector in an airport won't detect that. So what you have to have instead are much more advanced screening techniques at airports to actually find that. Um, flyers see that all the time here in the United States now. They're less prevalent overseas. Of course, we need to make sure that those same techniques that we know are working here are applied overseas as well. What I would also add, though, Margaret, is none of these detection methods are perfect. All of this requires really good intelligence to try to penetrate the organization, screening of individuals who are applying for visas to come to the United States, screening getting onto planes. It's all of these pieces that fit together. None will be perfect. All will reduce the likelihood of a catastrophic attack. Mr. Stefan, back to you about AQAP and in Yemen. The way you describe them as a very potent group. What did the year of political unrest, which finally ended this past spring with the um, with President Saleh leaving, what did that do to their relative strength, both inside Yemen and their ability to strike at the U.S.? Well, um, they gained a uh, substantial amount of territory, and, uh, and especially in the area of South Yemen. Uh, there is a few towns under their control. Uh, they were able to um, recruit uh, more individuals from different uh, tribes in Yemen. And uh, recently, we've seen them retaliating against the Yemeni government. For example, after Fahd al qusa was killed in a drone, they retaliated. On Sunday. Back in Emil on Sunday, yes. Uh, yesterday, they retaliated against a military base in a town called Zanzibar in Yemen, killing about 30 soldiers. So um, that gives you an idea about the capabilities that they have today, the weapons that they have, 
And let's not forget that many of al-Qaeda in Saudi Arabia, because they were defeated on the hand of the Saudi uh, services, uh, they escaped to Yemen. And Mr. Asiri is one of them. So is the number two guy in al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, al-Shahri. Those are Saudis. And um, it seems that uh, al-Qaeda now in Yemen is trying to establish uh, some kind of a sanctuary for their operations and to launch attacks against the United States. And Mr. Leiter, what does the U.S. effort against AQAP in Yemen look like? We know about the drone strikes. What else? Well, it's a very close partnership between the intelligence services and the government of Yemen, but as this report suggests, also with the government of Saudi Arabia, which has been threatened by al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula in the past. They attempted to kill the deputy interior minister. Um, and more broadly, there's a very close partnership, which was disrupted for some period the last year. The military partnership. Exactly. The military training that's gone on between the U.S. Department of Defense and Yemeni uh, military services. In the long run, it is that sort of training enabling the Yemenis to govern especially the southern end of the country, which I, I think is going to be so critical to maintaining some sort of stability in that country and eliminating the safe haven, which unfortunately now exists. Ali Sufan, back to uh, Asiri, the, the bomb maker. Tell us just a little bit about him and why, with all these resources, uh, U.S. resources now trained on Yemen, is he so hard to apprehend? Well, it, it is difficult when these individuals are hiding in the mountains or hiding in faraway places. Um, and um, al-Asiri is wanted not only by the United States, but he is also wanted by the Saudis. Remember, al-Asiri recruited his own brother, Abdullah, uh, as a suicide bomber in order to assassinate uh, Prince Mohammed bin Nayef, the deputy prime minister, in, uh, the deputy uh, minister, uh, interior minister in Saudi Arabia, um, using an underwear bomb, if I recall correctly. So he is an, uh, he's a very dedicated individual. He's a very evil individual. And and uh, he is one of those people who basically were from the members of the original al-Qaeda under bin Laden. Uh, he was arrested in Saudi Arabia at one point, then uh, was released from jail. And after he was released, he was able to escape to Yemen. And he set up a base in Yemen with uh, other Yemeni members of al-Qaeda and Saudi members of al-Qaeda. Uh, I think um, what makes him extremely dangerous, that uh, he provided the capability, and he provides today, actually, the capability of a lot of people who have uh, so much evil intentions mm -hmm. uh, to be directed against the United States. Brief final question to you. To what degree is the new government in Yemen cooperative with the U.S. or of two minds? I think they're remarkably cooperative. And many people thought that the uh, cooperative nature was going to reduce after Ali Abdullah Saleh left. That hasn't been the case, just showing that this is a real partnership between a broad coalition in Yemen and not just one leader. Michael Leiter and Ali Soufan, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.